Hey everyone, it's John Moran here with Solutions 8, and today I'm going to show you how to set a target CPA by the ad group. And so, for some reason, a lot of uh, people didn't know that you could do this. And um, it's actually something that's very applicable, especially in DSA campaigns, dynamic search ads, and that's what we're actually be discover, uh, discussing today. So, what a target CPA by, by ad group is, is traditionally, if you set a target CPA for a campaign, the, the bidding strategy of target CPA, you're using that target CPA goal campaign-wide. And there's actually a way that you can set the column to show you what the target CPA uh, should be for that specific ad group. Now, you can do this in a DSA campaign, so a dynamic search ad, if you have specific web pages or products that you want to have a specific return on ad spend for. Um, so because you're setting a target you know, CPA or possibly even like a lead generation campaign, what you're willing to pay for the type of lead going to a specific page. Let's say you're a, a company that has five services and you want, you want to use a DSA campaign or a regular campaign, and you have those five services, one service per ad group. Um, so you're building your ads, you're building your keywords, you're sending them to the correct landing page uh, for that ad group, but one type of conversion might be worth more, or you'll pay a lot more for a different type of conversion. Um, this way, you don't have to necessarily set uh, individual campaigns. You can actually say if this ad group is going after this service, let's say it's you know, landing page design or content development or email marketing, whatever it may be. And you're marketing your company or your products. Maybe you have, uh, and that's what I actually want them to be showing you today. It's a, it's a product um, for uh, hair care. And so we have, <coughs> excuse me, different profitabilities for different types of products. Or if you want to make a push for a specific type of product, you can set a possibly lower target CPA. Uh, and uh, and get more more impressions and more clicks and more conversions and uh, ultimately more traffic for that type of uh, type of ad group. So uh, I'm going to minimize my screen here. And this one is actually going to be a dynamic search ad, and you'll see that the uh, name of the company is um, is removed just to protect their identity. And what I have to do now today is I have to make some adjustments to my target CPA. So um, this one here, shampoos, this one is the one that's getting pretty much all of the impressions and clicks. And you can see I have 1,073, 1,024 came from the shampoos. Now, the conditioners and the styling, they're fairly well overlapped. So that's one of the issues that I'm running into a little bit uh, is identifying easily the, um, the types of categories in my dynamic search ads. <clears throat> now, if you see here, the target return on ad spend is a locked category, so you don't have to add it. You'll see a target, uh, sorry, target ROAS uh, um, here inside of the category. Now, this is actually the same uh, for target CPA. So target CPA, target ROAS, they measure something different. One is obviously tar target CPA is how much you're going to cost per the acquisition, whether that's a sale or a lead. Target ROAS is, it doesn't really matter what the cost per sale is, but how much did I make off of that conversion? Now, Target ROAS you can use for lead generation campaigns if you're assigning a conversion value to a lead uh, that is uh, being generated. Um, and actually, I'll go through that here uh, in a moment. It's actually a, a fairly simple exercise. Uh, so let me pull up my notepad. I think that this could be helpful for everyone. So hopefully you see the notepad on the screen here. <laughs> uh, but here's how you do this. And this is how you assign a lead value to a lead generation campaign. We'll give you a very simple formula. Um, you can start here. You can optimize the formula if you need to. But here's the, the formula. Now, let's say uh, your gross profit off of one lead closing is $1,000. You want to take that gross profit. And I'll label it here so you can see this. Gross profit is $1,000. Now, what you want to do is you actually want to divide that by your close rate. So let's say you have a 50% close rate. Every two leads you get, you close one of them and your gross profit is $1,000. So two leads generated equals one close lead, which equals $1,000. So your revenue per lead is actually $500. Because if you are generating two leads, Google Ads is gonna say that you've made $1,000. Well, if you generate two leads and you close one lead, you should make $1,000 because you have 50% close rate. So when I'm building my conversion action, <clears throat> my conversion value I would make for that lead is $500 because I know that if I get two, I'll make $1,000. If I get four, I'll make $2,000. Well, what's four times 500? $2,000. 
So you can actually use target return on ad spend for lead generation campaign if you are giving the campaign's conversion action, or I guess the account's conversion action, the proper revenue per lead. So that's how you, it's a simple formula that you can use now. You can modify it as well. If, if you have a 25% close rate, then you're gonna take, you know, as an example, if this is a 25% close rate, then my revenue per lead is actually 250 because it's gonna take me four leads to close $1,000. So four leads at $250, Google Ads will show you you made 1,000. If you have a 25% close rate, you will make $1,000. So that's just a simple formula there if that if you wanna use that, I would recommend doing that. But if you wanted to use target return on ad spend for a lead generation campaign, there's a simple trick in order to get that done. So what I'm making today is I have a 350% ROAS goal on shampoos. I'm making 351% return on ad spend. Good job, Google. Um, now the other campaigns though, they're not getting a lot of, um, they're not getting a lot of activity. I'm not meeting my, my spend. I'm trying to spend $200 a day. I'm not actually trying to spend $200 a day. I'm just trying to spend as most amount of money as possible with the return on ad spend goal. But I noticed that my, my conditioners and my styling, I used to have it set on 565. Uh, I dropped this down to 300 and I dropped down the styling at 200 to 250. Well, why? The styling and the conditioners, I know that I need a minimum of 181% return on ad spend to break even. So I'm going to shoot above that goal, but I needed to lower it from 500 to get more activity of the campaigns. I know that I can get the activity. The click-through rate looks good. Cost per click looks good, but it was just not able to make any sales recently at that 565% return on ad spend. So I had to drop that down. But what's nice here is I'm going to keep my shampoos steady. This, this here, this campaign is going to remain to be profitable because I'm in, I'm individually setting my ad group target return and ad spend to make sure, hey, my campaign is going to spend at least, you know, a thousand bucks a month. I'm going to make at least $3,600 good, but I need to take conditioners and styling and I need to bring those higher. I need to get more activity in those. So I'm going to set a lower row as goal to see if I can increase the impressions and clicks and search impression share. <clears throat> but if you were looking at this campaign wide, you would say, well, the shampoo is doing good, but the conditioners and styling aren't doing, uh, doing well. And I don't want to overall drop my, uh, my my target return ad spend because the whole campaign is going to start losing money. Well, if you segment them individually like this, you can, you can take an individualistic approach and say, well, these products aren't getting enough value, uh, or sorry, aren't getting enough, um, aren't getting enough activity, drop that return on ad spend goal, start to get more impressions, more clicks, and then obviously adjust as needed. Now this is a DSA campaign. So I'm going to add different negative, um, dynamic ad targets, possibly add more positive dynamic ad targets like the individual product pages itself rather than essentially just all pages with all of the conditioners and styling. I'm going to get a little bit more granular as I get more data. Um, this is kind of a newer campaign that I've, that I've launched. And so um, I just want to kind of share with you the ability to not have to just completely possibly ruin the campaign's profitability because you needed to get activity to other types of campaigns. And you don't want to necessarily build a brand new campaign because campaign longevity is a thing. If you have campaigns that have been running at a good return on ad spend, you don't want to necessarily just build new ones because then you have to kind of restart that process all over again of optimization. So kind of a quick tip in order to identify where either target CPA or target return on ad spend can be modified by the individual ad group. Uh, if you like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, um, ask any questions in the comments. I'm in the comments, you know, every day answering questions along with, with my, my partner, Kasim, he's doing the same thing. Uh, and thank you for watching. Thanks.